the Planet Live at the Sydney premiere of the Cup, starring Stephen Curry and Brendan Gleeson. Very lovely to meet you, Duncan from the Primate Live. Thank you for uh, joining us here. Now, um, most of us here in Australia, of course, know about the story. In terms of actually uh, penning the book itself, um, was it your main focus to actually really stay true to the story and pay homage to the situation, or what, did you sort of add a bit of poetic license to it to sort of jazz it up a little bit? Well, you know, there's so many elements to this story that actually don't need amplification. I mean, the truth is, is so much better than fiction. Exactly. And I will say, in the movie, you have to condense, you have to composite, you can't be a complete documentarian. But in the book, I mean, the facts that pertain to Damien and Jason and the loss of their father, uh, all of the amazing abilities of, like, the Dermot Welds and the Sheikh Mohammeds and the Frankie de Tories, I mean, they stand alone. So trying to just pick those elements and stay true to them was, was a real uh, a real chore when it came together to putting together the book The Cup. Sure. Were you actually involved during the uh, shooting process? Were you there on set? Or? Oh yeah, I did. I actually went on set several times. I had such a blast Excellent. because, you know, fortunately I'm not a tactician. I don't put anything into, into battle. But working on developing the script with Simon Windsor, we wrote the script together and then seeing how incredibly talented people. And I'm, I'm talking not just about Stephen or Jody or Dan or, or Brendan, but, but looking at these set designers and these, you know, production geniuses. Yes. And all these jockeys. I mean, don't forget, you know, you had like how many different races in this movie? And you had literally dozens of jockeys who were doing their best to corral horses so that, Vin, you know, Vinnie Rowe didn't beat Media Puzzle. I mean, it was just amazing to see that. And that was, to me, of course, it's so much easier when you get to look and see how people put it together rather than having to do it yourself. You're trying to recreate history, as it were. No, it is, because you have to be. I'm sure there are people who are going to look at things, and that's one of the things that I challenge people who watch the film, is to try and figure out what is actually real, because there's a lot, a lot of true footage in there that you can see and you can you can really smell Flemington and you can get a sense of the mounting of the yard. When does it shift over to the movie production? Which could have all of these jockeys in play, all of these really professional jockeys in play. And then when do you end up with Steve? When do you end up with Jared? You know, when do you up with them, end up with those guys? It's really challenging, and to see that film editing is just over the top. The, the whole composition of the whole piece is really like um, an orchestra kind of thing. Really oh, it, it is, and that's, that's, that's where, you know, us mere mortals, when we look at these, these uh, filmmakers, I mean, you really have to take your hat off to them because they're, they're combining so many different elements. And, of course... You know, you and I look for the blips. We look for the, you know, what was wrong in that, and they've got, you know, thousands moving in each one. Sure. And what, in terms of your observation of, say, an Australian production, what was your overall feeling of, say, making an Australian movie? What did you get from it in terms of... You know, it's, it's interesting. To me, I think when you go to and want to participate and understand a country, if you can find a portal, a door into it, you can really, if you choose the right one, and here it could be footy, for instance, yeah. you know, just as easily. It could be what millions of my fellow Americans, you know, we think Australia's Mick Dundee. Yeah. Okay? But I found that getting an understanding of Australia through the cup and through what goes on, and that's to me what something that's very interesting about the Melbourne Cup is it's not Melbourne's. No. It's you know, global, really. It, it, it really is. And, and people in Broome and people in Darwin and, and people in Rockhampton are just as, as chauvinistic and proud of the cup as, you know, someone from St. Kilda. So getting in and seeing it from that perspective and, and understanding it is, is really one of the great gifts I got out of this project. So will you be spending much more time here in the future? Oh, I'd love to. I come down every year for the cup. Right. Uh, and plus, you know, so much of what I've been doing has been, from, from my experience, Duncan, has been, you know, basically Melbourne, Melbourne and some more Victoria. So I have friends from college who live here in Sydney. I've uh, been all up and down. I was just thinking to myself, first time I came to Australia was 22 years ago, and it was over on Circular Quay, and you know, just coming back and seeing it like it is today is uh, from this experience and from this perspective, it makes me think I hope I'm coming back 22 years from now.
That's excellent. What are you actually doing now moving forward? What are you working on for the future? Anything to do with the equine industry or something else? Believe it or not, good question. Heads up, give me your email. I'll keep in touch with you. I'm writing a novel about polo. Excellent. Because uh, I believe it's very underserved. It's also very global, just like the cup. Uh, and the best thing, of course, about a novel is all the moving parts are in my mind, right. you know. And so, based on my experiences, I've brought in some Australian characters. Nice. Um, obviously, it's very dominated by Argentines and the English, uh, the British. But it's a very global sport, and I think it'll be a, a fun series of projects. My first one is set in Palm Beach. Okay. And uh, But I was just, it's interesting you mentioned this, because Duncan... The way we came to the story of the Melbourne Cup was through the Melbourne Cup Polo Tournament. Right, okay. And Memo Gracida was playing in it, and when he came back to the States the next month, he said, Eric, I saw this amazing horse race with 100,000 people crying in each other's arms. He said, you know, I've been to the Kentucky Derby, Royal Ascot, I've never seen anything like that before. These guys are crazy, and you ought to write about it. I will do. Thank you very much, Eric. Thank you very much for joining us on the Slowmate Live. I was just speaking with Eric before, yep. and he was talking to me about basically the treatment of the story, being the fact that it's a true story, and it's a harrowing story, how much um, was fact and how much was fiction, and he said that pretty much we tried to stay you know, 70-30 in terms of fact and fiction. Was that your intention throughout? Did you really want to go with a true as true story? Oh, I, 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 oh no, absolutely. I, I, I would actually say it's probably more 90-10, you know. I Fair mean, enough. Basically, what you have to do with drama is sometimes condense the number of characters because it's too hard for the audience to keep up, you know. So some things, what you have one character do rather than the three characters, and that's, you know, where you have to change things, you know, for dramatic reasons. But, yeah, basically the story is 100% true. You know, the beauty of this story is that, you know, truth is stranger than fiction. You know, if we'd invented it, people would go, oh, come on, you're kidding, you know. That didn't happen. Well, it did happen. And, uh, and uh, so, but, you know, like with every movie, um, you, you know, you just... Uh, you just you have to create, you know, three-act drama and the way you structure it, of course, you know, sometimes you have to chop and change little things a bit without changing the truth. And the whole thing, I think, is, you know, you're not making a documentary, this is a movie, and, uh, and uh, so um, what, what we're making is, is a drama and, and not a documentary, and, uh, and, and, but, um, you know, it's all true. And the fact that it's um, more or less a global sort of sport, and um, the story has global appeal. Was that something that, that why you gravitated towards the project? Um, look, great stories make great movies. It's that simple. And I think, um, look, I, I'm very drawn to stories that are, you know have a big emotional content. And I guess if people look at the body of my work, they will, you know, most of my films move people you know, emotionally, and that's what I look for when I read a script and um, or when I look find a story and this one just had such enormous appeal and it had this sort of epic background you know at its heart it's a human story about um, triumph over tragedy but this epic background of this uh, you know massive event in Australia and so that really appealed to me. Sure and working with um, interna the international name of Brendan Gleeson how much of did he get involved in the film did you sort of take nods from from him or did he offer advice or what? Oh no he he, uh, he was wonderful to work with um, one funny thing he said uh, to me was, look, um, when we talked on the phone before he'd committed to the project, he said, well, I'm not quite sure how to bring this up, but he said, um, the Irish dialogue, it, it probably could do it a little bit of work, you know, and I laughed and I said to Brendan, hey, the, dial the Irish dialogue's written by a Texan and an Australian who think they know how you guys speak, you know. <laughs> so he, re he rewrote Well, we, we worked on it together and we just changed, you know, the odd word or the odd expression and he suggested a couple of wonderful things and... Um, I introduced him to Dermot Weld, mm -hmm. and uh, so and Dermot gave him some great tips on the life of the trail, and he was able to spend time with him down at his stables uh, in, at the Curra near Island. Island. Yeah. And um, you've had the Melbourne premiere. How was it to premiere in Melbourne on the weekend? What was the reception like? Oh, it was fantastic. It was overwhelming. You know, it's, it's always the moment of truth for a director, and uh, it, there, it was a premiere you dream about. You know, everybody just embraced the film the media yesterday was overwhelming overwhelming which is fantastic you know it's that's always, what you dream about it's always nice to see something you're so passionate about um, accepted by the public isn't it yeah, it is well i mean you know it's like it's like having a child it's one of your babies excellent well thank you very much for no your time worries. good on you pleasure to speak this is duncan mcleod from the primate live at the sydney premiere of the cup starring stephen curry and brendan gleason